let's define the traits of narcissism and then move into the causes for this and, and most importantly how to spot a narcissist how to find out that you are actually with a narcissist be it in a relationship or at work and where you are enabling things where you need to step up where as healing is really needed so the most common traits of narcissism obviously is this extremely exaggerated selfishness and egotistical behavior but what's really underneath that is a complete lack of empathy and having said that narcissists are often also empaths they're also very energetic sensitive how can this be and the only way for this to, to actually establish in a person is this complete schism within you know so there is this this predisposition um, for sensitivity for energetic sensitivity and at the same time the complete and utter misuse of it okay for self-gain and it often comes with an extremely strong sense of entitlement and specialness grandiosity narcissists show you know like a huge sort of fantastical way of seeing the world seeing themselves in it a very superficial in that way they they care more about their appearance than you know sort of how other people perceive them from within they have very poor if not absent emotional regulation they get very angry very quickly often have rage fits often have throw tantrums that can be very scary and that can be very threatening as well um they often don't have the, the capability to listen or to even hear you at the same time super super hypersensitive they are seeking admiration i think this is um, sort of the archetype of the narcissist is this this the the, the need for admiration goes as far as uh, sort of self-admiration so it's like undifferentiated it's like a, a continual and obsessive addictive approval seeking seeking for validation from the outside and some of these traits that come with the with the behaviors that are all too familiar to us i think and that is arrogance jealousy talking people into things gaslighting questioning have them question their own reality manu manipulating crazy making and last but not least very very strong projection psychological projection where we blame everything on others so where we just sort of flip things around constantly but also energetic projection where we paint a picture energetically that literally pulls in others and especially you've guessed it, empaths. Because empaths and energetically sensitives, non-narcissistic ones, they're very susceptible to other people's projections because they can, they, for them, they were like as clear as day, as real as their own, okay? And when there is just a hint of doubt in yourself, a hint of doubt about what is yours and what isn't, and there's just a little bit of discernment issue you will not be able to see this because you'll think it's yours. I just want to emphasize here at this point that the Sacred Self Healing Course is really about getting a handle on these things. This is not just some metaphysical discourse or psychological, uh, uh, you know, coaching thingy. No, this is about hands on work, guys. If you have friends, if you have people whom you know are stuck in this. Now let them know about the Sacred Self-Healing Course because this isn't an event, guys. This is a process, okay? It's a lifelong process. People need lifetimes to get past these attachments, okay? I designed it as a 12-month journey and I should have, like, designed it as a lifelong journey, but I'm telling you, you know, even a 10-day commitment is too much for most people. <laughs> so uh, the truth is, you know, once we start this, this self-healing journey, we begin to understand the reality of that, the depth of that. And this 
replaces or can replace years and years of therapy, years and years, lifetimes of misery, you know, of destructive relationships, of, of children who are getting pulled into this and so forth. All right, so yeah, let's um, take this down a notch here because I know I know you guys are commenting. <laughs> uh, I want to answer your questions here. If it's typical for narcissists to be wealthy, this is a really, really good question because the answer is yes. Why is that? Because in this world that we live right now, narcissism is promoted. It's that dog eat dog eats dog, elbow comparison, competition, degrading others, comparing, judging, harder, more, walking over dead bodies, you know, not showing any empathy for other people, you know, losing money or you know, losing their integrity or whatever. Yes, it's very common to find full blown classical even clinically diagnosable narcissists in CEO position, very high politic, po uh, uh, politics, leadership positions, and ultimately, of course, in our patriarchal structure, you know, often sort of the, the archetype of the overfather in our family structures. Um, is there a gender specifics to that? Yes, there is. So the, the the archetype of the narcissist in, in classical psychology was defined as male only because of the patriarchal structures that our societies have been having for the last thousands of years. So the ratio currently is somewhat 80-20, but it's growing. And why is that? It's growing, that the, the, the female ratio is growing because obviously as a side effect of emancipation, but also um, because we have uh, a society now where social media and so forth that really sort of makes this socially acceptable and possible for all of us to really indulge in ourselves. You know, we don't even have to interact with other people. We can just send pictures of ourselves, a vlog all day long, and all we need is likes, right, to get that validation. And so true interaction isn't really what most people are looking for nowadays and that uh, provides a, a breeding conditions that provides perfect conditions for narcissists not only to develop but also to uh, have a stage you know to actually to actually project this out <laughs>